Andrew and I just saw The Greatest Showman, and we're going to talk about it. So if you don't know, The Greatest Showman is a musical uh, movie about the start of P.T. Barnum, like how he got his start in creating the Barnum and Bailey Circus. And it starts with him as a young boy and goes through up until they actually open their first big top circus tent. Uh, and it is actually like a musical where the songs are telling the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's a spectacle for sure. And it sort of just goes through his life and talks about his family and him building his first show and all that. I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was good. Uh, I remember when La La Land came out last year. Nope, two years ago now, I guess, technically. And everybody was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be the next big thing. Everybody's going to make original movie musicals. And this is the only one that's been made since then. Uh, at least major. Budget. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was the deal. They and La La was Land wasn't budget. really a major budget film, nor was it a big release at first. So mm-hmm. um, it eventually became so because of the popularity, word of mouth, and the Oscar buzz. But I liked this more than I liked La La Land, and I actually liked La La Land. I like things about La La Land, but ultimately I think it's disappointing and overrated, uh, mostly because it's a musical with two leads that can't sing. So Everybody in this can sing. Yes. So they've got that going for them. Yep. Uh, so I, as a musical, we'll talk about that first, I enjoyed the way that they worked songs into mm-hmm. this film. Uh, they felt necessary and they contributed to the narrative, yep. which is something that I like. Um, rather than just performances. Right. And the only one that was just a performance was also just a performance. The first right. time Jenny Ling sang, or right. Jenny... Lind. Yeah, Jenny Lind sang, was clearly not a narrative. I mean, it was a themed song, but not a narrative song. With plot happening around it. So mm-hmm. it wasn't, you know, it, it was still necessary. Um, but it was in canon, like her singing mm-hmm. performance. Um but no, as a musical, I thought that the music was pretty good, um, pretty modern. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's what I liked about it. I think it definitely felt like a modern musical, not a period piece. Like it is visually a period piece, but um, but it it wasn't modern in a sense of like Great Gatsby doing hip hop. But it was, um, it had you know a little bit of that that modern flair with some of its lyricism and definitely some of its beats. Mm-hmm. Um, like just the lyrical beats are a lot faster than old school musicals, which uh, definitely I think helps capture an audience. Uh, today's audience wants a little more fast pace. And I also thought matched up with the idea of P.T. Barnum too, is that I felt like if his musical had been music of the era, it wouldn't have worked because Part of his deal is that he was doing something right, different. that was different, that mm-hmm. stood out, and that people were like, this is weird. Yeah, weird and different. Uh, it's really, I'd say pretty well choreographed. Uh, there's a lot of really mm-hmm. cool moments, Chore- uh, choreography-wise. My pop, my favorite, are we spoiling? Is that okay? Yeah, spoilers. Uh, there's a particular moment in the bar scene uh, between Philip and uh, Phineas where... Uh, he's trying to convince him to join. Oh my god, no, that whole scene was so, great, so sexy. But my favorite piece of choreography was not the two of them. It was the bartender moving glasses and cups off of the uh, bar as uh, Zac Efron's character is going across. And like in beat and rhythm mm-hmm. with him, I thought that was really cool. And I liked the end where they'd agreed and they're toasting and like he's filling and throwing shots and they're drinking on beat and up. Oh, that yeah. whole scene was so pretty. There's a lot of cool so uh, rhythm, like nailing signs in. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of that earlier on in the film, and it kind of loses that particular portion towards the end uh, in terms of the rhythm with the action. But um, it's re- it's really good. The story is really interesting. The love story is is well told. Mm-hmm. Um, well, two love stories really. Uh, between yeah, uh, so our two gentlemen leads. PT and his wife, I loved their love story. Him and Charity, like it was 
really, really, really pretty. And it starts with him young and you get to see them sort of grow and like this right. idea that Letters. they never give up on each other that I really, really liked. The story of the film was pretty predictable. Uh, I heard a lot of people, so a lot of people that I know personally were like, oh, I'm not going to go see that because P.T. Barnum wasn't a good person and they shouldn't make a movie about people who aren't good. I just want to point out for a brief moment that these same people really love Walt Disney, so we'll just leave it there. Uh, <laughs> He's a flawed person. They very much make it obvious that he wasn't perfect. He does some pretty terrible things. Uh, yeah, mostly just neglectful. Um, neglectful and also... Selfish. Selfish and also, like, clearly brings these people, all of his freaks and oddities and unique people, out into the spotlight. But then, when he wants to get into high society, hides them away. Yeah, sure. Doesn't want them. them to come in, doesn't want them to sit in his box, doesn't want them to be visible. And, like, it's very clear that he was kind of a jerk. And I liked that. I liked that they didn't sugarcoat it. No. They acknowledged that he was kind of a jerk. And he has sort of a moment where he realizes, oh, I was kind of a jerk. Right. Uh, and it's ultimately a story about family. And I really liked, I thought that, I wish that there had been a little bit more for his unique performers. Because uh, there were some really interesting beats in there, uh, but only like three or four of them had really big parts. Yeah, pretty much the bearded lady, uh, Zendaya's character, Anne? Anne? Mm -hmm. Anne. Anne. Anne and her brother, W.D. And then also uh, Tom Thumb, who's, I don't remember his real name, but Tom Thumb is, and the bearded lady too, are like, Tom Thumb was P.T. Barnum's one of his very, very first things was this um, little person dressed up as Napoleon. Right. Uh, and so I thought, I thought though, that they portrayed those characters really well. I liked the cheek. I loved when they met Queen Victoria. Right. That was a lot of fun. That was really, really fun because everybody was really worried. And then Victoria is known for sort of being kind of... A an a, interesting sense of humor. Yes, yeah. an interesting sense of humor, kind of different in a more modern queen. Um, and so I liked the way that she was portrayed in that with her dog. Yeah. Because that's the other necessary part of Queen Victoria. <laughs> yeah, so overall, I thought it was good. I thought it was a good study of like acceptance and family. It told a good story there. My favorite moment, so there was a critic. And I think part of what really held on to me in this movie was like the beating heart of somebody who's into show business and theater and performing and creating something like that because clearly that's what I do with my free time. And so like I really like felt for all those moments. And so there's this critic who comes in and you know calls P.T. Barnum's like original show a circus and says that he's nothing but a humbug and says a lot of disparaging yeah, things. It's a fraud. Mm -hmm. And he looks at the first one and says make sure it's printed in all the papers and anyone who brings in a copy gets half price tickets. And I thought that that was great. Yeah. That was a great moment. And then this guy continues to give disparaging reviews of the circus um, but they have a fire and the whole place burns down, which is how he moves from being in a building to being in a tent. And I liked the moment where the critic sat down with him and said, I never liked this show, but it seems like the people do. It would be a shame if you didn't rebuild. And then he says, you know, a different critic might have looked at you bringing all of those people together, putting all these people of different races, different sizes, different shapes all up on one stage as, you know, creating... What do you say? Creating... So it's a celebration of humanity. Yes, as a celebration of humanity. And he goes, well, I would have liked that critic. <laughs> that would yeah. have been nice. Uh, and so I liked that moment with the guy who clearly, like, the whole time, just, like, never smiled. Yeah. No, I don't think he smiles once in the film. He gave a standing ovation once. 
to the singer? I feel like he might have slightly smirked in the conversation with uh, Phineas, but I it would have been maybe. He, he gave a standing ovation for the singer and literally was like, yeah. That was his enthused face. Yeah, he's a fun portrayal of the critic. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed that moment too. And then they do rebuild. And it it ends happy. And it also ends with him realizing that like he wants to see his family succeed as much as he wants his show to succeed. And like that that's what he was doing it for. And the music's really fun. I have those songs stuck in my head. It's also good to realize that like most musicals, the things that happen in the numbers aren't really happening in real life. Because mm-hmm. uh, there is a particular moment where something happens that is physically impossible and would cause death, which is the entire uh, Zendaya Zac Efron duet. Because uh, there are multiple moments that if someone did that in real life, like someone would have gotten severely injured. First off, I just want to mention that someone did do that in real life. I realized that like it was stunt people with like airbags to catch them, but they did that in real life. Right. Somebody this is... left off of a railing and like caught a Correct. Like... But this was a singing musical duet <laughs> with someone who is not a performer, uh, yeah. jumping on t- and bigger than the person he's jumping on to, <laughs> uh, c- her catching him in midair while swinging and keeping momentum. Uh, Andrew, Andrew just couldn't handle it. I was. I mean, I get that. I, it, no, I, I get what it was. I listened to you, though. Like, I went, though, no. <gasps> no. <laughs> uh, but, uh, obviously, you know, they ended in the same position they started in, which is to allude that, you know, they might have been dancing in place, maybe, but it was more of a conversation that was being mm-hmm. had. And, of course, in musical format, it is much, grand, you know, grandiose. And... Uh, same with... So, Andrew talks about that scene... I was much more nervous in the first love song between PT and his between PT and Charity when Finn and Charity oh, the when roof? they're like dancing on the roof and she's like I running thought to myself, full what tilt if she fell at off the end of the roof. <laughs> yeah. So, but we liked the choreography and it was it had that thing that musicals have where like clearly it's bigger in your mind than it is in reality and yeah. I liked that. Yep. Uh, right. So, rating the recommendation, I would give this movie four and a half stars. I left very happy. I go four, but it's it's. I mean, uh, musicals aren't really typically my thing. Even though I am a musically driven person, uh, I, musicals and I have a very uh, tumultuous relationship. So it just depends on the show. Um, and movie musicals are even harder for me. So uh, than stage. So it just depends. But overall, I thought it was well produced. I thought it was well acted. Um, Hugh Jackman is wonderful. Uh, Zach Efron does a good job. Zendaya does a good job. Uh, I don't know the actress that plays the bearded lady, but she did a wonderful job. Um, yeah, it's yeah. a it's a pretty yeah. it's a pretty enjoyable film. Uh, if you like musicals, if you are in show business, mm-hmm. I would highly highly recommend Absolutely. seeing this movie. And if you like Hugh Jackman or Zach Efron or Zendaya, I would huge like Jackman, huge Jackman. All right, and on that note, I'll see you tomorrow.